Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton and I'm here for episode number 75. And on this episode, I want to talk about a phrase we hear all the time, lifestyle choice, and maybe a misunderstanding about that. So let's get into it. Okay, so, you know, you hear it all the time, like, don't go on a diet, make a lifestyle choice. And people were like, keto isn't a diet, keto is a lifestyle choice. And I have to say, like, this may get confusing, I'm just working out what I think about this, but it's been on my mind recently. I think we should call these shows when I do these, like, Kim, Kim has lost her mind, or Kim finding her mind. I don't know, they're so random thoughts by Kim. But uh, lifestyle choice, right? Or lifestyle, it's a lifestyle change. You know, you hear it from gurus all the time. To be healthy, you need to make a lifestyle change. You need to, and then people say, well, keto is a lifestyle choice, right? So it's like, oh, okay. So I've made a choice. I've made this lifestyle choice. I've chosen keto as my way of life. And on some level, that's great. You're like this, I am keto. This is my life. It is boundaries. Um, make the one decision that removes a hundred other decisions, right? If you're keto, you don't eat X, Y, and Z. Wow. Off the plate. Easy. That makes life a lot simpler and choices get easier. So that one call keto, boom, boundary, right? And so it kind of made sense. When I first went keto, I'd hear people say, well, keto is a lifestyle. I'd say it, keto is a lifestyle, right? And in a way it is a lifestyle, but ultimately you'll hear people say, make a lifestyle choice that you can do for the rest of your life. And people will often take that to mean like, okay, so if you lost your weight doing keto, you have to stay keto the rest of your life, right? Like you're locked in now. It's now your lifestyle. It's like you're, you're done. It's, it is, you are, you are committed to this lifestyle and you can't get out of that lifestyle. You're in it. It's like a life sentence style. Um, but one of the things I started thinking about much more is that a commitment to prioritizing your health is really the lifestyle. So what do I mean about this? Well, you know, we often will see like, oh, somebody went Atkins. What's the main complaint with Atkins? If you think about it, it's that, you well, you have this induction phase where, what does that mean? Some of you never did Atkins. So where you are staying under 20 grams of carbs for this quote unquote induction phase, this starting phase. But then over time, you start opening that carb window wider. So you up your carbs, you're able to increase your carbs, you're out of that phase, you're in a different phase. And then so often people will say, well, Atkins really worked for me at first, but then I started adding more carbs because I thought I was supposed to, and I started gaining more weight. And so then other people were like, okay, well, you have to treat keto like a lifestyle. You have to, you have to stay with it. You have to, you can never not be keto. I believed that, right? When you first started, you look, I am like a total cult member, right? I will join your cult. I will join that keto cult. I'm just going to be honest that like that dogmatic, like joiner personality, I have to fight it really hard. It is part of who I am that I'm like, I am on the team. I am on team whatever. And I am not on team whatever. I like this. I don't like that. I'm, you know, I go that way. And I don't actually think that's always to my benefit. 
So I try to watch that. But when I first went keto, it was like, I'm doing this for the rest of my life. People, you know, when I would run my first big keto group, people would come in and be like, well, but what about this? What about, no, no, you stay 100%. So there's no reason to do that. You don't have to do that. Well, no, you don't have to do that. But can you do that? Right? Do you have to be so serious about it? So strict about it? And so what I kind of have come to is I've been doing a lot more experiments. Well, I've always done experiments, but I've been doing more higher carb experiments. Don't worry. I'm not suggesting everyone needs carbs, um, but to see like what's, what goes on there? What are the mechanisms? What's happening in my body? What does my blood sugar do? What does my weight loss do? What does my weight gain do? What's going on? And one of the things I've realized is keto was the thing, was the change that taught me to prioritize my health. It was the first thing in my adult life that I did that made what feels like a permanent change to who I am, how I function. What it allowed me to do was turn down the noise of my food addictions and my unhealthiness and my sort of commitment to an unhealthy life and say, I am now going to be committed to an ongoing health journey. And so I guess what I wanted to say today, just this thought that I've had, and I'm curious what your thoughts are. And if anyone wants to talk about this, like I'd love to talk about it with you. I'd love to start this dialogue is I think for many people with many health conditions, with a lot of things going on, keto is probably the very best vehicle for them to get from where they are to a point on their journey where they want to be and to the end of the journey, right? It's not, I'm not saying it's only good for the beginning, but I'm saying that um, for me, it was the thing that got me started. And what it did is it got me anchored into being committed to growth, to health, to looking at real facts about the way my body worked and not being stuck in this sort of depressed, uh, rundown, victim place. It was the first thing I did where it felt like I really engaged on a health journey that felt like it was going to work for me. And that gave me a sense of agency, of ability, and that ability turned into another thing and it grew and it grew and it grew. And so I guess what I want to say is like, I think there are some people out there who get turned off. Like you say, oh, keto is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. If you start eating more carbs, you're always going to gain the weight back that keto is the only way it's, you know, none of those things are true. Believing those things can sometimes be a barrier to entry, right? So if keto is the next right thing on your health journey, I want people to have it. I want people to be able to have that without the follow-up thought. But if I go keto, I can never do whatever. I can never uh, not be keto. And I just want to say like keto could be the rest of your life or it could be a step on your journey. The difference between people who go keto, stop being keto and continue to succeed and the people who start being keto, stop being keto and fail. The difference there is that the first group of people, the people who stop being keto, but they ultimately succeed are ones who didn't put the weight on keto, right? They weren't like keto is the key to success. Maybe they thought that at the beginning, but at some point they said, no, my commitment to health is the lifestyle. That I am somebody who is committed to better health. That is the choice I make. Keto is the vehicle. It's like, I need to get somewhere. I'm getting there with this vehicle. Just because you get a different vehicle, like, Maybe you hit some water and it's time for a boat, right? You're still going. You're still moving. Whereas people who go keto, stop being keto, and then fail, what they've done is they've said, well, I'm not keto anymore, so I'm back to who I used to be. Like they haven't embraced an identity change, the identity of health seeking, the identity of somebody who's on a constant self-improvement journey right? Because what I learned going keto is that 
normal, <laughs> common and normal are confusing, right? Because eating like crap all the time is common. It's not healthy. And so the choice is, it's a false dichotomy. It's a false choice between keto and crap. Like you can choose many other choices, but for a lot of us, that was the choice we made. Like keto was the thing that allowed us to start to eat a healthy diet compared to our crap diet. You know, fill in the blank about however you ate, but you know what I mean. But I never had a healthy eating pattern. It was always crazy. Um, my food addictions were always in control, but now my commitment to health is in control most of the time. Um, and so when I make food decisions now, whether they're keto or they're low carb or they're something else, they're always going to be fingers crossed, you know, based on health choices. And so I think that what I wanted to say on today's ramble, um, was that don't mistake lifestyle for life sentence understand what you're really committing to. And at the core, what you should be committing to is your health and your happiness and your well-being. It doesn't have to look any single way. And so you might be confused. You might be saying, is this podcast about that we shouldn't be keto? No, no, not at all. What I'm saying is I have found keto the best entry point for moving from an unhealthy lifestyle to a healthy lifestyle. Is it the only doorway? No, it's the one that I found worked for me and worked for people like me and worked for people with problems like my problems. And it was the doorway. Now, once I'm through that doorway, I can make other choices or it can be like, I really like this room. I'm going to stay in it. But ultimately my commitment isn't to being the keto police, isn't to being keto, isn't to being any label. My commitment is to myself and living my best life. And so if you have to borrow something, like I had to borrow the identity of keto being my highest value for a while. It's like you can use some crutches. You can borrow uh, a cane, right? You can use something to lean on until you get your sea legs under you, until you get your strength. But ultimately, if you're struggling, if you're falling off, if you're falling into the garbage, if you're going back to binging, if you're binging on keto junk food, get to the bottom of it. What are you committed to? Are you committed to your health or are you committed to fitting into a crowd and figure out what you need to do to commit to your health and take those steps and get help if you need it. And that's what I, I'm here for. And people like me are here for, we're here to help. We're here because we want to support, right? And so if you need me, reach out. And if you are doing well, I'm so happy for you. And if you're not doing well, know that you can do well. It's just that you're not in that place on your journey. We all have struggles. We all have good weeks and bad weeks, but remember what you're committed to and get clear on that you deserve to be, have commitment in your life from yourself to your health and happiness. All right, people, that's my ramble for today. And I will be back next week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.